The Life and Sad Ending of Maurice Evans Maurice Herbert Evans was born on the 3rd of June, 1901, at 28 Eisen Way in Dorchester, Dorset. He was the son of Laura Turner and Alfred Herbert Evans, a Welsh dispensing chemist and a keen amateur actor who made adaptations of novels by Thomas Hardy for the local amateur company. Young Maurice made his first stage appearance as a small boy in Far From the Matting Crowd. He first appeared on the stage in 1926 at the Cambridge Festival Theatre and joined the Old Vic Company in 1934, playing Hamlet, Richard II, and Iago. He was selected by Terence Gray to appear in the opening production in November 1926 at the Festival Theatre taking part of Orestes in two parts of the sensational production of The Orestia of Aeschylus. In 1927, he was one of a group of out-of-work actors, including Laurence Olivier, chosen to perform in a tryout of R.C. Sheriff's Journey's End, directed by James Whale at the Apollo Theatre in London, and later in 1929 at the Savoy Theatre, which had been leased by the Chicago Theatre manager Maurice Brown. It was a huge success, running for two years and making Maurice's name. He played the young officer, Raleigh, who dies at the end of the play. In 1934, he went to the Old Vic Theatre, where his interpretation of Shakespeare's Richard II was highly praised. It was the result of this that he was invited to join Catherine Cornell in the United States. His first appearance on Broadway was in Romeo and Juliet opposite Catherine Cornell in 1936, but he made his biggest impact in Shakespeare's Richard II, a production whose unexpected success was a surprise of the 1937 theater season and allowed Evans to play Hamlet. In 1938, the first time that the play was performed uncut on the New York stage, Falstaff in Henry IV, Part I, in 1939, Macbeth in 1941, and Malvolio in the Twelfth Night in 1942. Evans became a U.S. citizen in 1941 when the U.S. entered the Second World War. He enlisted in the United States Army, and he later was in charge of an Army Entertainment Section in the Central Pacific and played his famous G.I. version of Hamlet that cut the text of the play to make the title character more appealing to the troops an interpretation so popular that he later took it to Broadway in 1945. Evans rose to the rank of major by the end of the war, and he shifted his attention to the works of Shaw, notably as John Tanner in Man and Superman, and as King Magnus in The Apple Cart. In 1952, he starred as the murderous husband in the original stage production of Dial M for Murder, he also successfully produced Broadway productions in which he did not appear, notably The Tea House of the August Moon. In 1956, Evans recorded an LP of stories from Winnie the Pooh. American television audiences of the late 1960s will remember Evans as Samantha's father Maurice in the sitcom Bewitched. His real-life insistence that his first name was pronounced the same as the name Morris was ironically at odds with his bewitched character's contrasting stance that it be pronounced Maurice. Evans also appeared in the fourth season of Daniel Boone, starring Fess Parker playing a French impresario Beaumarchais. He also played the puzzler on Batman in a double episode storyline, which was common for that series, in December 1966. Continuing his American TV appearances, he guest starred in The Big Valley from the latter part of the fourth and final season of that Western series in April of 1969 on an episode entitled Danger Road. Evans had a great impact on the big screen as well. He played a diabolical villain in Kind Lady, 1951, co-starring Ethel Barrymore, Keenan Wynn, and Angela Lansbury. He played Emperor Antonius in Androcles and the Lion, 1952, and Sir Arthur Sullivan in The Story of Gilbert and Sullivan in 1953. Evans appeared memorably in two 1968 films as the evolved orangutan, Dr. Zaus in Planet of the Apes, and the 1970 sequel Beneath the Planet of the Apes. 
And as the doomed Hutch, who attempts to warn his friend, the title character, Rosemary Woodhouse, in the thriller Rosemary's Baby, of the true satanic nature of her neighbors, Roman and Minnie Castavet. Evans appeared in more American television productions of Shakespeare than any other actor, beginning in 1953. For the famous television anthology, Hallmark Hall of Fame, he starred in the first feature-length, i.e. longer than an hour, dramatizations of the plays to be presented on American television. In bringing so much Shakespeare to American television in such a short span of time, between 1953 and 1960, Evans was a true pioneer. This had never been tried before, at least not in the U.S. In his personal life, although he had taken U.S. citizenship in 1941, Evans had returned to Britain by the end of the 1960s. Aside from an infrequent trip to the United States and occasional visits to retired actors in financial need, he lived quietly near Brighton. He never married and was survived by a brother, Hugh, of London. Sadly, Evans died aged 87 in Roddingdean, East Sussex, England, reportedly of heart failure as a result of a bronchial infection.